Okay, friends, one of the first things we have to do to get started on the job is safely raise and support the front of the vehicle so the wheels are off the ground. After that, remove all of your lug nuts and then the wheel. Now that the wheel's off of there, we have a nice clear view of our caliper. The next thing that we're gonna wanna do is pinch off this brake hose right here. When we do this, we wanna be very careful not to damage the hose in any way. The next thing we're gonna do is get ready to loosen up this banjo bolt. Of course, fluid might potentially come out of this, so make sure you have a collection bucket, hand protection, and eye protection. Okay. We've got that broken free. Now I'm just gonna go ahead and snug this just a little bit here. That'll prevent fluid from pouring out of there. And let's continue on by removing our caliper bracket bolts along the backside. Now the next thing we're gonna do is remove our caliper mounting bolts. You'll find one here and one right up top. Just gonna put that in a couple threads. There's that one. The other one. Now we can grab onto that caliper. We're gonna slide it out of here. And now we can completely remove our banjo bolt. Now at this point, we can carefully turn this over. We're gonna empty out the caliper. At the same time, we're gonna remove our pads. Now with the pads out of there, you just wanna take a quick peek at them. Make sure that they're not worn or damaged. By worn, I mean of course you don't want them to be very thin, and of course you don't want them to be worn at an angle. These of course are brand new, so I'm really not too worried about them. Now before we go ahead and put our brand new caliper on, I always like to take it apart and just lubricate everything along the way. I'm gonna turn it around, and we're gonna remove both of these slider bolts right here. The next thing we're gonna do is remove the sliders from the caliper itself. Go ahead and pull on that boot. Just be careful not to break it in any way. As you remove it, we're also gonna remove the boot from the slider itself. Now at this point, we can take a little bit of that caliper lube and we're gonna go right along the entire shaft of the slider. And then of course, up inside the ridge, right up along where my thumb is here. That's where the boot's gonna ride. It's very important to have some grease in there. Now I'm also gonna take some grease and I'm gonna come right along this area on the bracket, right where the boot's gonna ride as well. Once again, this is gonna help keep moisture out of there. Very important. Now we can take our slider boot and put it right back on there. You're gonna notice on the slider boot, you have the wider end and you have the thinner end here. We want the thinner end to be facing towards the slider itself. Slide it right up and over that ridge, give it a nice wiggle. A Little bit more caliper grease on this, why not? And then of course, we'll slide it right in. Once you pop it in, just give it a nice spin. That's gonna help ensure that the grease is fully in there and it's gonna help keep the moisture out. Do the same to the other side. Continuing with the caliper grease, we're gonna put a thin amount along each of these edges right here. One there, one right here, and then the same on the other side of the bracket. Now with the grease on there, we're gonna continue on to putting on our tins here. You wanna pay attention to this area right there. This area needs to fit up inside the area where the rotor's gonna ride. I'm just gonna line this up. We'll slide it right on. And then of course I'm gonna reach in and I'm gonna press that in. That's gonna lock this in. If you forget this part, the tin could fall off and more than likely you're also gonna hear some noise coming from your rotor. Go ahead and clean up your mess on this. And then set it aside. Now we're gonna grab onto the muscle part of the caliper. This is the area that has the pistons. I'm gonna use some of that caliper grease and just go right along the metal aspect of each of these pistons and then along the backside of each of these ears. That's gonna help with vibration dampening and noise reduction. Okay, let's grab all of our stuff and get over to the truck.
back over at the truck, we're gonna go ahead and slide that bracket on, take both of our mounting bolts with a little bit of red thread locker, we'll start them in, snug them up, and torque them to 85 foot-pounds. Now it's gonna be time to get our pads on there. To do that, I'm just gonna carefully slide one ear down in here and then one ear up along this top area here. Okay, slides right in. Just make sure that it can wiggle around and then do the same to the other side. With both of the pads in there, let's go ahead and take the caliper, slide it right over those pads. There we are. Take both of your mounting bolts, start them in there, snug them up, then torque them to 27 foot-pounds. Now the next thing we're gonna do is get our flex hose back on there. But if yours looks like ours does, with a whole bunch of rot and build up on it, you need to make sure you clean that off first. Okay, now that we have our flex hose cleaned up, the next thing we're gonna wanna do is deal with our banjo bolt. That's gonna be the bolt that holds the flex hose to the caliper. Of course, you're gonna wanna inspect it. Make sure it doesn't have one of these copper gaskets on it. We'll go ahead and recycle that. The next thing that you want to do is make sure that the hole right here isn't plugged up. So if you have any parts cleaner or a little bit of air, you can gently blow through this and just make sure that it's not obstructed. Okay, now that we have that cleaned up, the next thing we're going to do is just remove our little plug from the caliper here. We'll set that aside so we can use it in the original caliper. Now let's take our gaskets here. I'm just going to take one, put it right down on the banjo bolt so it goes all the way to the bottom. Now we're going to line up the flex hose with where it needs to be. Go ahead and take that banjo bolt, slide it right on through. Use your second gasket. It's gonna go in between the hose and the caliper. We'll slide it right on. Now at this point, we can snug this up and then torque it to 25 foot-pounds. Let's come right over here to the driver's side. We're gonna remove that cap and then we're gonna to top it off with DOT3 brake fluid. Once it's full, make sure that you reinstall your cap. Okay, we're in the finishing stages here. Let's go ahead and take this off. Now the next thing that I like to do is go ahead and pump up the brake pedal. You're not gonna get a very firm brake pedal because of course there's a lot of air inside the caliper. But what will happen is, is the fluid will make its way down inside here and then we can start gravity bleeding this. Let's get the boot off of there. We'll open this up. And now we're gonna wait for a steady trickle of brake fluid to come out. Okay, so now we have a nice steady stream of fluid coming out. I'm gonna go ahead and close this off. Perfect. The next thing we wanna do is just double check our master cylinder. That's up underneath the hood. You wanna make sure it's nice and full, and then we're gonna continue on with the bleeding process. Now, real quick, before we go ahead and bleed this, I just wanted to mention, if you're doing more than one brake and you're gonna be replacing something inside of the hydraulic system, typically when you're bleeding the brakes, you wanna start with the wheel furthest away from the master cylinder. So if you're doing all four brakes, you would just start with the right rear, left rear, right front, and then left front. We're only doing the left front right now, so let's do it. Now to go ahead and bleed these brakes, I'm gonna need somebody inside of the truck. They're gonna go ahead and pump up the brakes very slowly, three to five times. On the last time, they're gonna hold it and let me know they're holding it. Go ahead and pump the brakes, please. While you're doing this, you also wanna make sure that you don't have any brake fluid leak at the banjo bolt. Okay, now we're gonna open this up and watch for air. All those little spurts that you saw kind of shooting out that weren't a steady stream of fluid, that's obviously air. So we want to do this again until we don't see any more of those spurts. Go ahead and pump up the brake, please. Okay, so that last pump looked perfect. Now the last thing I need to do here is go ahead and clean up my mess. I'm gonna put my cover back on. That cover on there. Once the brakes are bled, go ahead and come back up here and double check your master cylinder. 
Okay friends, we got our caliper in there and everything's all torqued up. What's left to do now? Take it for a road test.